J.Y.Puck is undoubtedly a legend in the K-pop industry, but his career is definitely one of the most interesting ones that we've had the chance to witness. From unexpected collaborations to extremely weird performances, here's a deep dive into J.Y.P.'s music career. Everyone has the reason to like or to dislike J.Y.P., but you can't deny that he has made history in the industry. Jin Young-Puck was born in Seoul and later moved to New York where he stayed with his mom for three whole years before going back to Seoul to finish high school. He studied at Yonsei University University, where he finished his bachelor's degree in geology. Yes, of all majors, JYP studied geology. Not music production, not even anything related to arts, but geology. While he was getting his degree, he actually joined a band called Park Jin Young and the New Generation, starting his music career. The band had three members and was put together by famous singer from the 70s and 80s, Kim Soo Chol, but it didn't catch on with listeners and failed to become popular. Over the next two years, JYP attempted auditions at different entertainment companies one of which was the SM Entertainment. But JYP to this day jokes about being turned down by Lee Suman, who was more impressed by his songwriting than his singing. This resulted in a funny situation where Lee Suman rejected JYP as a singer, but wanted to purchase the song he used for his audition. If you ask Lee Suman though, he has a different story to tell. According to him, JYP was the one who didn't come back for the second audition, leaving Lee Suman to proclaim, who comes to an audition only once and never comes back. He then said that he'd happily let JYP audition audition again, and while we have no idea who's telling the truth here, we want to see JYP's audition tape for SM. SM Entertainment wasn't the only company who rejected him though. Because he didn't match the appearance companies had in mind for an idol, JYP ended up facing numerous rejections and dead ends. He also spent time working as a backup dancer as he managed to get into the dance crew of renowned singer Gim Gun Mo after being spotted at a nightclub by Gim Gun Mo's producer. Then in 1994, he released his first solo album, Blue City. Even though his earlier group album didn't do great, his solo was a huge success. The first single from the album, Don't Leave Me, became a huge hit in K-pop. It stayed at the top of the charts for two weeks in March 1995, and it transformed JYP from an unknown dancer to a real pop star. He released a single and an album, which were very successful, and put his name out there. However, despite how famous he got, there were still people who weren't exactly fond of him. People still didn't find him conventionally attractive, which is one of the selling points for K-pop idols. He was charismatic and talented, but he was pushing boundaries that nobody had pushed in the past. Not only that, but he kept wearing some outfits that were deemed inappropriate and very random. Yes, we're talking specifically about the shiny, transparent plastic pants he wore in Don't Leave Me. While the pants have become a meme now, it was quite the scandal back then. Even JYP himself said that he wore them because he was frustrated with the bands of the music shows, saying, At the time, you were suspended from broadcast stations if you wore sunglasses. You were also suspended if you wore earrings or dyed your hair. The pants are kind of traumatic to K-pop fans nowadays, but kudos to him for standing his ground back then. He also was very open about how he had made his relationship public at the time and lost a lot of popularity, which is why he won't allow his idols to date nowadays. In 1997, JYP started his own company, JYP Entertainment, which was initially called Taehong Planning Corps. It was during this time that he met Bang Shi Hyuk, who later founded Big Hit Music and Hybe labels. JYP found Bang PD after he finished studying at Seoul National University, one of Korea's top schools. Actually, considering the circumstances, we can kind of credit JYP for giving Bang PD the courage to start Big Hit and then Hybe. He was starting to become known as a composer and producer, and JYP took him under his wing and he started working for his company. While working with JYP, Bang Shi Hyuk co-created and worked with many famous groups. Artists like G.O.D., 2AM, Rain, Baek Ji Young, and Wonder Girls all had songs composed and produced by the successful duo of JYP and Hitman Bong. Bang Shi Hyuk and JYP understood from the start that for K-pop to become widely known, they needed to enter the US market. Then, around 2003 and 2004, they both went to the US and actually started living together. Yes, the two founders of two of the biggest companies in the industry were roommates. They didn't have any money, so JYP pulled some connections and they shared a room in the house of someone he knew. They didn't have any luck. They hadn't sold any songs for a whole year and they were getting agitated because they were living in someone else's house. This led to them having having fights over the smallest things with JYP explaining, he was in charge of doing the laundry. He told me not to leave the socks inside out. I kept forgetting and eventually we were both tired one day and exploded. A 2020 NPR article about Bang PD highlighted how their ability to balance genuine respect alongside intense disagreements about music contributed to the success of their groups. Their time living together also made Bang PD leave the company and start Big Hit Entertainment, a name which was also suggested by JYP. However, the two still remained friends and are very close 
to this day. In 2004, JYP started working in the American music scene, becoming the first Asian producer to transition to the US, which led to some interesting collaborations. He produced music for artists like Will Smith, Maze, and Cassie. He also worked with Lil Jon and Stevie Wonder, and in May 2008, JYP teamed up with Jackie Chan to create the I Love Asia project in response to the earthquake in China. Yeah, he was everywhere. But his work as a producer and the founder and CEO of JYP Entertainment has led to some iconic songs in the industry. Think of songs like 2 PM's Again and Again, Hands Up, Heartbeat, Wonder Girls' is Tell Me, So Hot, Nobody, and Twice's Signal, What Is Love, and Alcohol Free. However, we can agree that he's one of the few CEOs that have a very large presence even now. He still performs, still releases music, and still goes on music shows to do interviews. This has led to him not being taken as seriously as he would have liked, especially by the newer K-pop fans. There was the issue with him allegedly being involved in a cult, which he then denied, but it tainted his reputation. There's also the problem with the way he has treated his artists. It's mostly why fans aren't very fond of him and why his artists are wary of working with him again. However, it doesn't matter because now that he's not the CEO of JYP Entertainment, it seems like he wants to push himself as an artist, but the performances he's been putting on so far have been interesting to say the least. Remember the MAMA performance in 2019 when he performed with Mamamoo and then had a solo stage with Wasa? The two performed JYP's hit Don't Leave Me with both wearing clear jumpsuits, paying homage to JYP's clear pants. While Hwasa did a very good job, seeing JYP perform like that was very bizarre. God 7s Jackson's face during the performance sums up everyone's feelings about it pretty well. Most recently, his performance at the 44th Blue Dragon Film Awards raised a few eyebrows. The event had surprising musical performances that spiced up the evening, including New Jeans giving lively renditions of their hit song ETA and Super Shy. During their performances, the audience was seen happily clapping and smiling along with them, with BB even looking like she might cry while watching the performance. Then JYP came to the stage. He did a mix of his own songs When We Disco and Changed Man, and famous hit Sweet Dreams by Eurythmics and Take On Me by Aha. His performance with an outfit change from a white coat dress to a purple bodysuit got various reactions from the crowd, which included famous actors and K-pop idols. Some of these reactions became viral, like T. Kim Son Young's surprised expression, Song Joong Ki's seemingly concerned look, and EXO's Dio and Crystal Jones's puzzled expressions. The stark difference between their reactions to New Jeans and to JYP makes the whole situation even funnier. The performance became a meme, but some people ended up praising JYP for his confidence, to the point of calling it delusion. A Twitter user said, All jokes aside, I think if I walked through life with the same lack of care and delusion as JYP, I would be unstoppable. No matter how confident he is though, the new generation of K-pop fans see him as more of a laughing stock rather than an iconic figure in the industry. He has spent years making a name for himself, and yet these performances are seriously diminishing his legacy in the eyes of newer K-pop fans because of how ridiculous they look. Sure, he's still the mastermind behind one of the biggest companies, groups, and even songs, but the way he insists to still do over-the-top performances and stay in the public eye as long as he can will make newer fans remember him as the ridiculous man in the dark coat and the eyeliner rather than the JYP, the producer of numerous hits. What do you think of this? Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye, guys!